Hey guys, welcome to Inside Boxing Brain. Today's video is all about Tyson Fury versus Derek Chisora. I want to give you my official prediction, breakdown of the fight, and I want to talk about a little bit of the build-up and anticipation of the big card in December. So, before we jump into the video, I just want to touch on a few key points that have been mentioned time and time again whenever we talk about Tyson Fury fights and Tyson Fury's opponents. So, you may recall the whole Glovegate conspiracy theory in which Deontay Wilder essentially accused Tyson Fury of having a false glove or a unpadded glove so that his fist was actually only protected by less than an inch of padding, whereas official gloves are meant to be much more padded, sturdy and durable so that a fighter isn't sustaining you know, powerful power punches to the head. Now, this whole theory got debunked. There were numerous videos that came out about this whole Glovegate conspiracy, videos where people were actually experimenting with real gloves to see if they could do it. And as far as I am concerned, and the World Wide Web was concerned, and the boxing fans, the whole theory was debunked. And there was no logical way that Tyson Fury could have cheated Deontay Wilder in any of his fights. Now... In the build-up to this fight with Derek Chisora, Derek said something in the um, press conference which really made me feel that he was alluding to the fact that Tyson had cheated him as well. Now, plain and simple, he said it as that, Tyson cheated me. Um, he was messing with the gloves in their first fight. And once again, it just made me think, are Tyson's opponents bringing up these types of issues as a way to cast a shadow on his career and his name? Or is there actually some truth to the matter? Drop me a comment below and subscribe to my channel if you agree with what I'm saying. Um, I'm really interested to know what you all think on this matter as well because as far as I'm concerned and I was aware, there's a whole sanctioning team of people within the locker room when these gloves are getting wrapped. And once your, your hands are wrapped and you're, you've been gloved up, there's no real way of you taking your hand out of that glove unless you cut the tape and remove it fully. But that tape is signed by the British Boxing Board of Control or the sanctioning body of the fight. So it's really far-reaching, if you ask me, that professional boxers would openly come out and accuse other fighters, in this case Tyson Fury, of glove tampering in a professional boxing match, which is recorded... And people can watch that back to see essentially what happened within the fight. So for me personally, I did think, hmm, suspicious. They've put a gagging order on um, Derek Chisora. So Frank Warren has put a gag order on um, War Chisora. Now, that is essentially so that he can't talk about the ins and outs of the contract. So it makes you think... Are the Frank Warren and Queensbury camp hard to deal with? And what things have they put within there um, to really silence War Chisora? Why would they be trying to silence War Chisora um, in the build-up to the trilogy match with Tyson Fury? So I'm really interested to know what you all think about this whole glove gate, glove tampering situation. When I watched that interview with Derek Chisora, I then went back and watched their first fight. So Tyson Chisora won. And I didn't see anything in that fight that made me think, oh, the gloves were being tampered with or this wasn't a fair fight. So again, is this just the hype and the hypocrisy of boxing fans and boxers to try and get as much eyes on the sport and as much hype behind it as possible? I really think it's a shame, given the fact that we've not heard anything from Conor Ben since his failed drugs test and that massive cloud that came over the sport. <clears throat> For now, the heavyweight division to be, you know, throwing suspicion and shade on one another. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I really think that, you know, we need to look at this subject matter in more detail. And we need to pick apart why boxers, and in particular Tyson's opponents, feel that he's cheated them. Um, 
there may be a few different elements to that, but we can get into that in a different video. I'm keen to know everyone's thoughts, but what I want to talk about specifically today is the trilogy fight and my reaction in terms of an outcome, prediction and build up to the fight. So, first of all, I want to say that both of these fighters are actually friends. Um, don't be fooled by the animosity that they show for one another on camera. Uh, in reality, these two fighters are very close and they are friendly with one another. And if any of you uh, have followed either one of their careers, you'll know personally just how friendly they've been with one another. Uh, Tyson has said many, many a times that, you know, Watcher's Aura is my friend and I will always give him that trilogy fight. Years and years ago, this seed was planted. So for many boxing fans, it wasn't a surprise when this got announced. Um, I suppose it's a much more interesting fight than, you know, a Mahmoud Cha. Um, and given the fact that there were no other names really publicly being thrown out there, apart from, you know, those sort of... Um, wrestling matchups and and random fights that uh legacy i wouldn't even say legacy fights they're more like joke fights aren't they for tyson to get involved in um this was only the real serious card that was thrown out there for fans to think okay potentially this could be a realistic opponent for tyson so when it was announced we weren't very surprised many people were disappointed if you just look at tyson fury's last post on instagram the amount of comments on there saying this is not the fight that we wanted to see runs into the thousands and i think that's going to be reflected over in terms of the pay-per-view buys for this fight um I don't particularly think that this fight is going to take off the way they think it's going to take off. And yes, both fighters have big fan bases in the UK. But having said that, we've all seen fight one and fight two. And having seen both fights, we're not particularly interested in the third fight. We all know the outcome of this fight. I don't particularly think I need to do an official breakdown. I could summarise it within a few sentences because... In the first and the second fight, we just saw how much how much better Tyson was and how much more elite of a fighter he is within the heavyweight division than Derek. We all know that Derek likes to stand and have a proper fight. He'll throw a fist and he will fight until the man can't fight no more. But he doesn't have a skill set to even come close to matching Tyson Fury. And we all saw that in the second fight when he got stopped... Uh, Don Charles, I watched an interview on um, Seconds Out and the man could not answer a question straight. The way he skirts around the questions, you know, why are you going for a trilogy fight when the second fight was clearly such a mismatch and you had to pull your fighter out? And he starts going into excuses and then says, oh, but no excuses, you know, he was absolutely 100%. We had the best camp ever. So if you had the best camp ever then and you're going to have the best camp ever now, I don't particularly see there's any other way for you to get any other outcome other than a stoppage loss on this occasion because Tyson has improved. Tyson isn't a pit a pat a boxer the way he was only a few fights ago. For instance, when he beat... Um, Vladimir Klitschko now Tyson likes to sit down on his punches and he turns them over and he puts his whole body weight into it and for someone like Derek Chisora who is a very flat footed fighter who plods along with that same type of rhythmic movement this is a very very bad fight for him and this is a mismatch I guarantee that this fight is not going to go past six rounds um, and in the press conference when Tyson said, I'm going to pick a round and that's when I'm going to finish it in, I completely believe that to be true. Um, and the betting odds are going to go crazy as soon as that comes out because I really do think Tyson is that much better than Derek Chisora now that he will finish him with a shot when he wants. Um, there are levels to this game and that's not to put you know, a smudge on Derek Chisora's career but he's never been able been able to perform at world class or elite level he's always fallen short he's the gatekeeper he's at the cusp of fringe world level you know British titleist um, European titleist but in terms of a world championship I really don't think that he is, has got it and every time he's done it he's fallen short and he's lost uh, the last few fights that he's been in 
People were screaming for him to retire because of the damage that he's now taking and the shots that he seems to take. So putting him in with argu arguably the heaviest, biggest, tallest and most prominent heavyweight of the last 10 to 15 years, I really think that this is a one horse race. Um, if anybody disagrees, please drop me a comment in the section below. How do you see Derek Chisora winning, apart from him just catching him with a lucky overhand swinging punch, <clears throat> the way that he throws them? So, where do we go from here? I think... It's going to be a clear victory for Tyson, which is going to set up the fight with Alexander Usyk in around about March, April time next year. I think Derek Chisora is going to retire off this fight. It's been estimated that his purse is around about £2 million. And once that's all been chopped and changed and the taxes and the, the people have been paid, I think he'll be left with about a £1 million um, or slightly less. But... It is a career which he can be proud of and it's a pay packet that he can retire on. Um, we do not want to see Del Boy get hurt in the ring and he's getting old and he's getting slower. And yes, the last thing to go is your power and you can always throw them power punches and hurt your man. But we're not interested in seeing Tyson Fury fight an old, out of shape Del Boy. Um, it's not an exciting fight. It's definitely not one for the fans. So Del Boy should retire after this fight. And I think the heavyweight division, again, needs to take stock. And the fights that the fans want to see need to be made. Uh, Eddie Hearn, Matchroom Sports, Frank Warren and Queensbury need to get over their little tiff that they have around making fights and contracts and negotiators and arbitrators. This whole situation between the two camps needs to get resolved and it needs to get resolved quickly because we need to see the Tyson Fury-Anthony Joshua fight. We have to see that. Um, and if we don't see it as British fans, I think we will never forgive the parties that are involved. Um, and boxing is getting far too complicated and I can see why boxing um, isn't a, you know, front of house sport in the UK, like football, because the way it's run and the way that these fights are managed and set up, it's very, very speculative. Sometimes it's touch and go whether they're even going to happen. So to round up this video, guys, I think that Derek Chisora is absolutely 100% going to lose this fight. Tyson will stop him within the first five to seven rounds because I do feel like Tyson wants to give people value for money uh, and he may actually let Derek get into the fight. And that's crazy to say because heavyweight fights should be competitive and both men should go out there with absolutely no idea of letting their man get into it. But yeah, that's my opinions on the fight. Tyson's going to win in spectacular fashion and it's going to set us up for a massive unification. Uh, in fact, it's going to be an undisputed fight next year with Alexander Usyk. Um, I hope you enjoy these videos, guys. Please subscribe to this channel. Um, I want to get to that 1,000 subscribers. That is my milestone and that's my goal. Um, drop me a comment in the section, comment section below as well in terms of what you think about this fight. Who do you think is going to win? How is it going to play out? And do you think there's any actual um, substance in this whole Glovegate conspiracy that, that seems to crop up time and time and time again with Tyson Fury? Um, my next video, actually, I feel like doing a series where I actually break down my favourite fighters. Um, so I'm at the moment, I'm watching a documentary on Muhammad Ali and... I want to do a whole breakdown video of Muhammad Ali and his career and some of his great fights. So stay tuned for them. They are going to be coming up soon. Um, I've been really busy over the last few days, so I haven't had time to jump on as much and do my prediction and breakdown videos. There is a lot going on in the boxing world as well and over in America within the welterweight division um, with Errol Sprentz and Terence Crawford. So there are a lot of videos that I have in the pipeline 
I hope you're enjoying them. Again, subscribe to my channel. It's Harry from Inside Boxing Brain. And yes, you guessed it, guys. I'll be back for a video very, very soon. Peace.